Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a screenwriter's rant about Moxie as uh, a movie on Netflix. And let me tell you a little brief story about Netflix before I start this rant. This is going to be a rant about Netflix, okay? Netflix, doggy, you just heard the whole thing. So, I tried to cancel my Netflix. I, I actually was canceling it now. I don't really watch it all that often. I saw the stuff I wanted to see. Uh, I, 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 I was still upset a little bit about cuties and kind of annoyed. So I go to cancel it. You go to the page. You're supposed to click and cancel. I canceled it before. The button's gone. The cancel button's gone. I'm like looking all around for it. Keeps taking me back to the same thing. Finally, in frustration, I call Netflix. They're like, we don't charge you. Xfinity charges you. That's my cable company, Xfinity. I call Xfinity. They're like, you don't have Netflix with us. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I go back and forth with these guys. Finally, uh, one of the guys at Netflix says, Oh, someone must have logged in to Xfinity in an Xfinity cable box, which, you know, I have friends and family who use my account. That's part of the deal, right? They can use your account. So I call and so it turns out they logged in and took over my account. My account like moved to their package. No one told me. No one alerted me. I'm like, what the hell, man? You just you just hijacked my package like that because you have my login details what the hell is that what the hell man it's very annoying so now it's part of a package and now i i don't know if the people who are friends and family have the package i don't know if they're getting rid get rid of it if it's free for them or what it won't be free forever i'll tell you that but it's very annoying I, you can't just cancel anything anymore everything connected to xfinity formerly comcast they're like that, I think. I think. That's my opinion, Comcast, of you. You make canceling things impossible. I think. That's my opinion. Just my opinion. All right. Let's get to this movie. It's called Moxie. It might as well be called Woke, the movie. Because that's what it's about. Amy Poehler is the, I guess, a single mom. And she's got a daughter who's 16 who discovers that her mom was a protest. Protester right? She was a protester. So she discovers all these things. There's a, there's a Photoshop of her being in a band, I guess, and being cool and outrageous. But her daughter seems to be a happy, well-adjusted teen in the beginning of this movie. Yeah, she's awkward a little bit. And they're talking about stuff and oh, all the guys are really toxic, most of them. So they don't re she doesn't really seem to have that big of a problem at the school like she's not being bullied or harassed although some other people kind of are uh some of the good looking girls and then there's this girl who's uh i i can't say she's angry but she's just annoyed by some of the guys and then she goes to the principal and she says oh no i have to fill out a bunch of paperwork if they if say they're harassment but like the harassment i mean it wasn't it was kind of a stretch what they showed in the trailer now maybe there's more maybe she's actually harassed in the movie maybe the character's actually harassed but it looked like she was just annoyed by a guy right and like it these are teenagers right yeah you don't want them to like harass people and you don't want them to bully people. But they are teenagers. You got to give them a little bit of leeway, especially if it's just verbal. If it's just verbal, no one's really getting constantly. I mean, there are students who constantly, yeah, they'll do it. And they should be addressed. But mostly, and look, I worked in the school system. I know how it is. Um, most of these teachers just keep their heads down. And that's not right. It's not right. But they don't have that control. The dysfunctional students are jammed in with the students who are just normal. It happens all the time. What you need to do is address the dysfunction in those other students. That's what they won't do. They will not do that. They push these kids through the system. So this girl is like meets this other girl who's uh, being harassed or whatever. And she's like, oh, just keep your head down. The guys won't leave you alone. She's like, no, I'm going to keep my head up <laughs> okay and then suddenly 
she becomes kind of an angry feminist. Now, one of the lines is Amy Poehler says, "Oh, you know, when I was when I was your age, I used to protest things, do things, fight the patriarchy." Like, okay, so you got to figure that Amy Poehler is got to be at least in her 30s or 40s. So you're winding back the clock, maybe 20. 25 years, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, I'm not sure if patriarchy would have been the right word back then. Because I was around in the 90s, and I was even a substitute teacher in the 90s. And I don't remember a lot of people using that terminology. So it feels like that's a poorly written thing. But this is directed by Amy Poehler. So I'm sure it's directed well, because Amy is a really good actress. Uh, she's really good at what she does. But, um, you know, this was sort of like this, ang it becomes sort of this angry feminist thing. And as you watch the trailer, now she's a little bit happy here, but as, and here, but as you watch the trailer, she gets angrier. Actually, in the trailer, they get angrier. And they, of course, do more protesting. This is sort of the guy that they like, because he goes along with everything the girls tell him to do. And they say he's hot. <laughs> Whereas the other guys, you know, the jock and the, uh, the the class clown or whatever, they're not hot. They're not hot because they're they're part patriarchal. And then, you know, Amy Poehler sort of half-asses her parenting, asking about her daughter when she starts to protest because she wrote this uh, thing called Moxie. And it becomes a political movement. So, you know... The next thing you know, see see how angry she looks now? Now, as, as things progress in the movie, she just gets angrier and angrier. And then, of course, there's an all-girl dance, I guess. I, it looks like all girls. They're just uh, jumping up and down. I guess there's one guy in the background, but they kind of take over the school. Like, here are the girls dancing, and there's girls on stage. It's like, and they, they're writing things on their hand that's part of the moxie creed and you can see they're taking oh oh they got a disabled they gotta get all the woke poke points there and you could just see they get slowly more and look how angry she is by the end of this trailer this is obviously later in the movie she's furious <laughs> so she goes from being a happy kid to kind of now in this scene she sort of likes this guy so that's okay that's okay he he he's you know a harmless male so he could he could be okay but you can see it's uh, it's kind of like super ultra woke, I guess. And it just feels so preachy. It just feels so preachy. And it looks from the trailer like Amy Poehler took her happy 16-year-old daughter and turned her into an angry feminist just by such oh, yeah, I used to do that. That was a big suitcase full of my old flyers. Why don't you go check them out? And then she becomes kind of radicalized by <laughs> It, and becomes kind of miserable and angry and angsty. Um, so that's weird, right? I mean, wouldn't you want your kid to be happy? If your kid was happy, especially if you had a teenager, wouldn't you be like, wow, teenager's happy. I think I'm going to leave that alone. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't have any kids, but I, I come from a very large extended family, and... Believe me, I've been through the phases of teenagers, not just myself, but of other people parenting and various phases. I've seen it. I've seen it like so many times because I have so many cousins and relatives. And it's always the same pattern. It doesn't matter what era you're in. It's the same friggin' pattern every time. And this one is completely, it turns it on its head, right? Because what normally happens is, and Typically, this is with girls, although guys too. But guys are different in in their their way. But with with girls, they become angry at their moms. Uh, they just hit that age, and they 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 both want to be queen bee of the house, <laughs> and there's this conflict there. But then at some point, they resolve it, and then they're like best buddies because it's it's sort of that passage into adulthood, and now the mom has a buddy to go shopping with and do fun girl stuff. And, I, and, and moms love that, right? But there's that, there's that window of time where they, ugh, they fight like cats and dogs. Um, 
And it's not everybody. It's not a universal rule, but that kind of happens. It's the same way with guys, but in a different level. They just go off. Guys tend to go, like, go off and do their own thing, so there's not as much drama. Guys aren't as dramatic, in my view. But this, this one goes the other way. She starts out seemingly pretty happy. <laughs> and by the end of the movie, it's like, I'm so angry at the Patriots. <laughs> Like, why would you do that to your kid? Why would you do this, Netflix? It's a, it's a movie to basically to say, well, if you're not protesting your school and all the terrible things that they're doing, what the hell are, what the hell are you worth? You're worthless. It's exactly the theme we explored in Wokistan about schools. That one of the premises is that in colleges, if you're not protesting, you're not a serious intellectual. If you didn't go out and protest something then you're not serious. So everybody, every generation, oh, you got to go protest, you got to go protest, got to go protest. But the, if the protest is ineffective, if the protest just is to protest, then it doesn't mean anything. You know, I, I tell this story all the time. Kurt Vonnegut came to my college and he was appalled that there was no politics going on on campus at my college. And... You know, I just thought I just laughed because it was we had uh, a political. You know, we had a class president and whatnot who had brought him in, and he was criticizing them. And I laughed my a off because I thought, oh, look at him! He'll just tell these guys off. It's awesome. And uh, the very next day, as soon as Kurt left, there was a protest against uh, South Africa apartheid, and that was the last time I saw a protest on my. Camp. <laughs> because it wasn't political. It wasn't a political campus. We just didn't have a lot of politics. And it was the 80s, so most people were okay with it. Not that there weren't problems. There were. But my campus just wasn't political. Nobody was into it. And now it's like been turned on its head. It's like You've got to be political constantly. If you're not political, what are you doing with your life? You have to fight the patriarchy. Yeah, so this way there'll be no guys <laughs> except, you know, beta males who will who will sort of cow in the corner <laughs> and 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 ask their permission for everything around you because we all know that's hot towards women, right? You know, you know, guys who are sort of a little bit wimpy, who don't who don't come out. You know, girls love that. Oh, they don't love uh, masculine, aggressive, strong guys at all. Right. Sure. Uh, so this is on Netflix, by the way. And, um, yeah, I uh, I still can't cancel my Netflix. Maybe, I'm, maybe we're all going to be forced to have Netflix from here on in. That would probably be the only way I'd watch this movie. 